Hello and welcome. Throughout the 112 year history of the New South Wales Rugby League Referees Association, 21 gentlemen have served as chairman. One man stands above as the longest serving chairman for 15 years. He guided the association through a period of great transition. If refereeing had immortals for his contribution, both on and off the field, he would certainly be in that class. It is my great pleasure to welcome life member Ian McCall. How are you, Ian? Uh, I'm in very good health at the moment. Um, I wasn't always healthy, but I, I, life has been very, very good to me. Oh, that's excellent. Excellent to hear. Yeah. How's your family been? How's Madeline? Yeah, she, she's good. She has a, a knee problem from time to time. Do you get out and do a bit of walking? Uh, I do a lot. I, I do a lot of walking in uh, Parramatta Park. Okay, and that keeps yeah. you fit and healthy. That, yeah, that, that's that's. I do it every day, sort of. Well, not not every day, but but Madeline drives me down to the to the ballpark and uh, and back again. Excellent, excellent. It's good to hear everyone is doing so well. We can see some images here of your family too, Ian, and one with your grandson Nick at his rugby, which I know you love going to. So before we talk about your refereeing career, Ian, I would like to touch on your, your working life. Like many referees, you used to be a teacher. Uh, you worked at Bankstown Boys, Epping Boys, Liverpool Boys, and Sydney Girls High. How did you find being a teacher? Well, I was very fortunate to um, have that list of teachers that, that, I, that I would work with in that, that period of time. And um, I, I never have any, I, well, I didn't have many problems at all. And uh, I was, I was, I, I had a really good teaching career. Do you recall uh, why you, why you taught at high school rather than primary school? I might have got in trouble at school when, um, sometime along the way there, but I um, uh, the, the brothers, but I went, went to the Parramatta Maris brothers. Yes. And, um, they sorted you out if you weren't um, um, up to scratch or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I got a bit of cable. Yes. And so did others. Yep. But that was all right. But it, you always had a mate if you were having a bit of cable anyway. Yes. <laughs> Tried to stay out of trouble. So after you retired from teaching, you're a volunteer at Riding for the Disabled. Yes. And you yeah. also train uh, trotting horses. Yep. Not very successfully. I've, my horse was called uh, something Popeye. Popeye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Popeye was a lovely horse. But he, 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 he'd do anything for you, but yeah. unfortunately, uh, my um, trotting career didn't last too long. Uh, now, short time. Which it was time I went over the front of the horse and, the, <laughs> and uh, I got a bust collarbone. So, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you broke your shoulder doing yeah. the trots. That, that's right, yeah. So poor old Popeye didn't win too many races, did he? No, well, not after that. He, 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 it, was, it was just a bit sad. Like the, the horse started. The horse gave his all. And... So did you, you always, you always liked horses growing up? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not, well, not as much as footy, but... Um, yeah. Now, if we have a look at your playing career, you played for Parramatta Marist at school. You were the captain coach of the Aubrey Roos, and you also had some success playing for Penrith in the Penrith comp in the early 1960s. Uh, you enjoyed playing for Penrith? Uh, yes, uh, my, my, uh, the, 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 I had a friend, um, well, well, we were schoolmates, right? Uh, like, like um, we were in when he, he went to, I don't know, 
but I used to tr travel up from Concord or, or to um, Penrith. Yes. And, and, um, and, and Neville used to um, he, get on the train and get off get off the train up up at Penrith and away we go to the footy and do everything else that we might have, we might have done or didn't do. Okay, so he kept uh, your company. He kept your company. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was a, he was a he was a good mate. Like we were we we were you know, you know like you had school friends. Yes. And I, and I had Neville Bow was my school friend, and he um he lived at, at uh, he lived at Labor's um they were um they made a motor um, Okay. So I, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that that photo I I really cherish. That yes. that, that, that the, the Aubrey kangaroo was just you know really really good for me. Yep. And that's you there in the middle. <clears throat> it, that's me there on the in the middle. Yep. Do you remember um, what position you played? Were you a fast winger? Were you a front rower? Um, no, no, no. I I was, I was a fast. Uh, I, I had I had speed, you know. Yes. So, um, not 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 well. I won't say I'm not not a lot, but I, I certainly in that team. Um, yeah, I played good. You did play good. You're good. I'm sure you would have been very successful. You would have been very successful. Yeah. Now we might yeah. start to talk about your refereeing. So you began refereeing in Parramatta. Uh, yes. In 1965, uh, why did you decide to referee? Um, because my father had been a referee, and I don't think I would have been thought of if um, I had gone somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So did he uh, he talk you into it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he he. He made it made it all possible, actually. Did you take much convincing, or are you happy to to join up? Um, uh, he, like my, my dad was good because he he looked after me, and he looked after some of his friends. Like um, one I just saw there. Um, geez, he sort of. Certainly would have had lots of lots of mates. Frank, Frank Rudd. Yeah, Frank, Frank Rudd. Rudd. Frank Rudd was one of the father's um, best mates. Yeah, and I remember, oh. I remember, I took you there for a visit a couple of years ago. We went and saw Frank Rudd. He's Parramatta's uh, oldest living life member, and he was he was still in in very good health, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, well is he still still that way? I believe so. I believe so. But yeah. Uh, well, that's that's now, as you mentioned, your father, William, was a big influence in your life. Uh, he was one of the early pioneers of, of Parramatta Referees Association when it began in, in 1947. Uh, he was the president of the association in, in 1957, and he became a life member in 1954. Uh, what kind of a man was he? You touched on some of his, his um, qualities. What kind of a man was he? I know he was an excellent father, but what kind of person was he? Um, well, he, he didn't he didn't suffer fools. I must say that. Yep. And uh, he, he was he was kind to some people and not so kind to others. Uh, do you know why he was he was kind to some people and and tough with others? Your father. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that, that's. That's the Parramatta way. <laughs> <laughs> so it was in his, in his blood nice and early. You can see on screen we've got a great old photograph here of uh, the early Parramatta referees, uh, many of whom were very close to your father, William. And we even had some graded referees in those days, including Schomburg down in the front row. Oh, yeah, Schomburg was... Um... A, a good uh, goal kicker and um, 
etc etc and all the other things that go with good good goal kicking because he played first grade didn't he yeah oh yeah he, very much so and he was a, a really nice person yes uh, he, 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 and then he didn't you know he didn't suffer fools yep do you remember much uh, about jim mills yeah, Jim, Jim Mills was uh, my father's best, or well, one of his better, better, better mates. Um, and he's, he's uh, the big thing that I think about uh, Mills was the quality of the of his um, gear that he that he got it together. Uh, Did he on, always on have the? On, 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 he was immaculate on the field. That's Probably the one I'm trying to say. Did he always have the starch collars? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. You know, you'll get one of them somewhere. And and... Shiny boots. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the Parramatta Referees Association recognised William's importance to refereeing in the district when they created the William Darkie McCall Award in 1982 for outstanding service to the association in the previous calendar year. You were the first recipient of the award. The award. There's some great names we can see, um, some great graded referees, Parnaby, uh, Pat Reynolds, Gavin Reynolds, uh, Pat Mackey, Alan Shortall, Max Dunn, Kevin Jeffs, Hale Butt, Presland, Paul Holland, Graham oh. Annesley. Do you remember when you received the first Darkie McCall Award? Um, how you felt at that time? Um, I was overwhelmed, actually. But I was just lucky. I think you're a very deserved uh, recipient. I can remember I've been very fortunate enough to win the award on, on two occasions, and it's, it's really very special. It's the highlight of my career so far. I think probably the thing that makes it so special is that you can't win it. No one can win it uh, within a five year period. Can they, Ian? There's, there's a no, time. It's a time limit. In, yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's five years you need to have. And, and I think originally it started off being 10 years. Um, yeah. Some good names there, but uh, we've been so around. That's Ken McNaught, isn't it? Yes, that's Ken McNaught. That's him. Right, okay. I, I couldn't have missed him. A very recognisable face in Parramatta. He's one of the few that have won, yeah, it, yeah. won it twice. There's a couple of people that have won it twice, isn't there? Max Dunn has won it twice. Yeah, yeah Max, he, he, he gives a lot to the Parramatta. Lot to uh, Parramatta. I think Ken McNaught has won it twice. And fortunately, yours truly, I've won it twice as well. It's, it's a fantastic yeah. award, isn't it? I think yes. it's... It's very befitting of, of your father. Well, yeah, well, that may be. It was, it was good. But Parramatta looked after Parramatta. That's what I always sort of say. And, you know, these, these, these are really good flashbacks, really. They are, aren't they? It's always yeah. wonderful looking at all the old photos, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think, like you said, I think Parramatta people always look after Parramatta people and they're a very yeah, close-knit yeah. close bunch, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And I think the award, um, it typifies the work that, that your father did. It was, it's about giving outstanding service on, on a long-term basis. Yeah, well, let's see, like, he, he, he had a family as well and... Um, he, he, was, he, was, he was pretty good. Like he, he, he was a good father, I can tell you that. But, uh, I'm sure he was a, a lovely gentleman. He would have been yeah. a wonderful person to meet. So you graded to the New South Wales refs in 1968 as member number 601. I'm sure a very exciting time for you. Uh, some of the mm -hmm. names you were graded with were, were Clive Edwards. Uh, Phil, yes, McCarroll, Phil McCarroll. Phil, Ma Phil McCarroll, yeah. Now, did he play first grade as well for Parramatta? 
Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, hooker. A hooker? Yeah. Um, we're talking about Phil McCarroll. Yes. And then my name's over that, and then there's... Also, Brian Brian Wiseman also got graded the same. Right, yeah, Brian Wiseman, yeah, he's another one. Des McLean and Moriartis at the same time. Nick Moriartis. Yes. Um, yeah, he, 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 he was good, but he, he, he was a bit overweight all the time, sort of thing. <laughs> Needed to work on his fitness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I shouldn't be saying that, but because I, I didn't always have the best, best fitness in my games, too, either. But, okay. yeah. did, did you enjoy doing the training, though? Um, well, it, it, was, it was all like it was a very matey sort of, um, you know, uh, pre people. people there was a lot of camaraderie that um, kept us going. Uh, yeah, so it made uh, that made those tough training sessions enjoyable. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do, do you remember, Ian? You were graded. Did you get graded as a touch judge, or were you graded as a referee? As a, a referee, I think. Yes. Because I'd, I'd be running around with. Um, Say Phil McCarroll and all those people, and they they were in grade. And they were, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Uh, so I I believe, as you said, you were you graded as a referee, and you were working your way through the lower grades as a referee, and then I, I think you did some third grade games as a referee, and then you became a touch judge. Yes, and that 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 came through. Yeah. Did you? Enjoy being a touch judge more than a referee in the end. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I always think about. It. I, 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 I was very well. I, I was pretty successful as a touch judge. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't have too much. It was a lot. A lot of. It was compared to today. It was a lot of good fun. Yes. But. Um, yeah, and that, that's that's the way it was. Your first grade debut as a touch judge comes in 1971 in the round 14 match between Newtown and Balmain at Henson Park. The referee was a fellow Parramatta member, Clive Edwards, and the other touch judge was Lyle Buckley. Jean, what are your recollections of your first grade debut? What was the standard of first grade football like? First grade, uh, like the, the New Down and the Balmain bits, that they they would slug, slug it out all. You had to be, you had to be on your toes, let's say, because if you if you uh, missed the beat, you missed the you, you missed missed out. Yeah, if, I think so, if you uh, if you blink, you miss something. It's a lot faster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's some good names there. There's some very good names there. So you touched judge 259 first grade games over your career. Uh, you're certainly in the top 20 of, of touch judges of all time in terms of, of number of games. Uh, this first game was with Clive Edwards. Do you remember much about him? He was a Parramatta referee. He also was graded the same year as you. Yeah, no, he, he was a pretty good player. He had a brother named Merv, did he? Merv Edwards. Yeah, yeah, young brother. Yeah, yeah. And I think Merv ended up going to, to Penrith to help start up the Penrith referees. I believe. Well, yeah, that's probably, that's probably what it was, yes. Uh, I think this is magic. Yeah. It, it's good reminiscing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it, it brings brings tears to your eyes. I think it brings back so many wonderful memories. That's true. That's true. In a long and successful career like yours, Ian, you're bound to come across a few strange incidences along the way. I want to take you back to one from round one of 1980. Uh, this involves the infamous 
Greg Hartley. What did Hartley do? I think he just penalised oh. Parramatta. <laughs> <laughs> did he? Did he? <laughs> He, 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 he was he, amazing bloke, you know, like he could scratch a bloody thing out of anything, you know, and, and turn it into a, a you know. Oh, he kept the penalty. Yeah, right out. <laughs> and they're back, they'd go back it again. And the Sheila came on the field that day. And you actually helped usher her off, as you can see on screen here in a minute, with your blue flag. Yeah. 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 Somebody put her through the fence. Well, and, then, and then order was restored. Now, yes. you, you ran quite a bit with Greg Hartley. I just loved him. He was, he was so, he was colourful, right? And he was a little bit of a showman? Uh, a, a big showman. <laughs> But, but a wonderful bloke. Yeah, yeah. No, he, ne he never did, did the wrong thing by me. Well, a, a lot of people didn't like him because he was a bit flashy, I suppose, and he was different. <laughs> but, but referees had their own personality, didn't they? And they showed that through. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's the thing about it. It was an era of personality. You know, like, um, that's what it was. It was like... Like it, that might be hard to hear one week and somebody gone and did something in another week and and everybody all got happy together again and that's the way it was. Go home and come back for three or four weeks. It was a good, for me, I, I, uh, I, I, I just enjoyed I just, I just enjoyed it. You know. So, throughout your career, uh, you would have seen a few very good dust-ups on the field. There were two of particular note. <coughs> Most notable was the 1981 semi-final between Newtown and Manly, where Mark Broadhurst ended up with two black eyes, while Newtown front rower uh, Bowden and Manly's Terry Randall were marched off by referee John Gosher for headbutting and kneeing respectively. Uh, Max Thompson, uh, a good friend of yours at the time. He was he was the yeah. other time judge on um, that particular game. Newtown and Manly. Newtown and Manly. I remember uh, you telling me uh, from the kickoffs, the first ten minutes, it was all brawl, uh, all fighting. It's all, is that me? Yeah, that's you. <laughs> okay, that's all right. I didn't get too close. Oh, geez, I did actually. Uh, but I, uh, a good part of the uh, the uh, the brawls and all that and in that era, um, uh, Kasha didn't he? He controlled it all pretty well, actually. Uh, uh, but um, yeah, so if it's Terry Randall and um, the Newtown bloke, um, yeah, ter Terry Randall was from Manly and he was sent off and. and mm -hmm. Bowden was the bloke from Newtown that was, was sent off. Right. Tommy Radonicus. Tommy Radonicus yeah. was the captain. Yeah. yeah. He was a pretty good <laughs> puncher. There would have been a few of them in those days. Oh, yeah. 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 But, but it was all good fun, actually. I mean, I mean, but people got hurt, but but um, it wasn't all. Uh, I think it was uh, it was settled on the field, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. That, that's that's probably what what you would say. I think. Yeah, there was never any animosity after the game. It was all. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Keep going, going your own way. You know? yeah. yeah, that white line fever. Once they crossed that line, yeah, it was on. Yeah. We'll move on to the next brawl of note, which was between South and St George in 1984 in an elimination semi-final. Uh, you mustn't have known where to look in this one. They came from all parts of the ground to get involved. Now, this would often happen where they broke up into several spot fires. Oh, yeah. See, see that, 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 that happened 
like what one player could run from one on what some distance away, one player, and he can build in and he build into the lake in the middle, and then the, the next minute somebody's coming from the other side. It was really it, it, it was terrifying in many ways because uh, well, you can look at look at the number of uh, players that are on the field. Like, what was it, your it, your strategy? As a touch judge, when when these incidents happened, well, the, the, you, you, as as a touch judge, you had to s sort it out with your own, with your other touch judges, you know. Yeah, and were you using you were, and, and the referee of course. Yeah. 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 So you were using your voice, um, yelling at players to stop, but then and then taking note of what was happening at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. You, you just stand back and let them go. Yeah. I think it'd be too dangerous if you got too close. Uh, yeah, if, if you got too close, you had to get out of the way quick. Well, that, I always thought that the, with, in those sort of situations, the touch judge would would take the centre, centre spot. Not, not, not the touch judge, but the, the referee takes yes. the takes the spot, and you tell the referee he, he did this and he did that, and then and that and that's that's the way it went. Yeah, so you're really acting as a team and and picking up anything yeah. that the ref ref did. Yeah. So is that Barry Barnes? Yep, that's Barry Barnes. He's, he looks good. he looks pretty good and trim. <laughs> he certainly did back then. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if it still looks like that now. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Barnsley was a good referee. Yeah. He, to me, watching footage, he looked as though he was, he was very fit. He, he yeah. managed to play yeah. as well and was always yeah. on the spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, was, he was a classy referee. He mightn't have gone to the top, but he, he certainly uh, did a lot to get there and that. Yeah, I don't think he did a first grade grand final, but he certainly did some reserve grade ones and it yeah. was a very consistent performer in first grade. That's right. That's right. So we'll talk about your first grade grand finals later on, of which you did three, but you were a very common presence on grand final day at the SCG. You touched judge the following lower grade grand finals on grand final day. In 1978, you did the under 23s grand final between Penrith and Wests. Uh, the referee was Don McDonald and Bert Reedy was the other touch judge. In 1979, you did the reserve grade grand final between Canterbury and Parramatta. Uh, Jack Danzy was the referee and uh, again, Bert Reedy was the other touch judge. In 1982, you did the reserve grade grand final again, this time between Easts and Balmain. Jack Danzy again was the referee and Barry Bradstock was the other touch judge on this occasion. And then in 1983, you did the reserve grade grand final between Manly and South. Uh, Barry Barnes, as we've talked about before, was the referee and Brian Wiseman was the other touch judge. Uh, you must have enjoyed running at the SCG, Ian. It was a, a place that you love to run at. Yeah. Um... It, it will, you know, that it's still the same today, isn't it? Really, it's that's the game. That's the place where you really want to go. Yeah, I think uh, even more so in your day. I think the tradition around the SCG it was it was the home of rugby league, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Look, look at the crowd. They were packed in, weren't they? Even to that's that's a reserve grade game, and they were packed into. In for that. Yeah. All right. So, Ian, there's plenty of great names there we saw in the programs from your lower grade grand finals, uh, one of which was Don McDonald. What are your memories of him? See, uh, Don, Don McDonald was pretty good. It was good to run with him. Yeah. And um, he, he later on, he went on to be president of the association, didn't he? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. Um, yeah, he did. He did. What it's was he? All, all, all in, the, in the TMT era, sort of. Yeah, anyway. What was he like as a referee? 
he, he was the referee and not the referee with. <laughs> that's, that's what I'd say about him. He, he, and he was a good player. Like, I mean, he's a good referee. But, he had uh, plenty of control as a referee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He certainly did. Because you, you needed it. Like as time went on, the game got faster and everything got smarter. It got, um, yeah, it just yeah. Went. Speaking of the game getting faster, throughout your career, you touched on it in the 70s and the 80s, it would have been a time of, of great change in the game itself. Well, the game that was today is not necessarily very much the game of yesteryear. Yes. And uh, I suppose probably even when you started refereeing in, in the lower grades, you would have had different rules like unlimited tackles and then four tackles, six tackles. So the game has changed a lot over time, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah play, was, players that, Today, well, it, it, it's it's a great game, and it's still it's still great. You know, that, that's all I see about it. All I, I can go to the football and watch it, and um, and um, do yeah. you do you think um, it's often said? Do you think maybe the the thought that it was tougher back then? Do you think that's true? Um. Or I, I, don't, I don't. This is a funny thing to say, but I don't remember getting belled or around too much. But um, uh, was that, well, that was because you were very quick? <laughs> <laughs> that, that stays the bold. <laughs> I, I couldn't run out of sight. Uh, uh, yeah. We'll focus on your rep career now, starting with City Country and then moving through to Test Matches and Origin. Uh, City Country was a good starting point for your rep career, Ian? Uh, City Country. Uh, that, that was, that was uh, it was, it's like getting, getting a, um, you know, you, you, you get, get an, an appointment and and that, and that's a good one, like city country or something else or one of those. You know, I, I look forward to doing that from time to time. I don't know whether yeah. I did many, but no. That so you did two city countries, um, a city country second. Sorry, in 1977, you did um, we one at the SCG with the country referee Wilson and Bert Reedy uh, was the other touch judge. You did. And in 1978 as well, with uh, Kevin Riolo from the country and then Bert Reedy again. Um, and then you did the City Country First with Jack Danzy and uh, the, touch, uh, the country touch judge Evans uh, at Newcastle International Sports Ground. So these would have been nice, as you said, uh, nice representative appointments to get early on in your career. Yes. Or do you be, you be hoping that you, you'd get the city country first, you know? Yep. So, um, and you can see there, there's some, in your city country first, there's some excellent names there, some really first-class footballers. Muggleton, Hilditch, Krillich, Mortimer, yeah. Bostead, Rogers, Cronin. Amazing. It must be special running it on the field with, with names like that. You must take a step back, did you, during your career and think, wow, I'm running with some of the best of the best footballers of all time. Well, that's that's what you aim to do, don't, don't you? Uh, put yourself in the best position to get the best appointment, I suppose. That's, um, and you certainly had had some outstanding appointments and achievements throughout your career. Now, in that particular match, it was won quite comfortably by New South Wales City, 47 to, to three. 
And the, the man of the match was uh, Peter Sterling. He deserved it. A very classy player, very classy halfback. Yeah, uh, great, great footballer. And we're going to move along now in chronological order to your test matches, of which you did two test matches, both, funnily enough, at the SCG. The first of which was Game 3 in the 1978 Test Series between Australia and Great Britain. You ran this match with referee Greg Hartley and the other touch judge was Neil Clements. You also touch judged the same match in 1984, this time with New Zealand referee Tony Drake and touch judge Noel Scissors Sislowski. What are your recollections of Test Match football at the time? Uh, in particular, the intensity of the matches and the standard. Um, it, it was sort of different, you know, because it was a it was it was a bit of a gimmick in some ways. But there were it was you know you had to have a, the the, the uh, Australia versus whatever anyway, and. Um, I think that, yeah. A lot of... You see, from, my, from my point of view, I, I would have liked to have, you know, played for Australia and that, and that was one of my aims, you know, like... Uh, and like, know that. like many referees, although you maybe didn't get to play there, you you were fortunate enough to go on and, and touch judge and, and referee at that level. Yes. And again, these, these games were at the cricket ground, a, a very special place to referee, particularly test matches. Yes. That's right. Yeah. If you've got a, if you've got a test match, you, you're, you're pretty special. Yeah. Yeah. And you knew you were at the top of your game. You were, yeah. Best of the best. Now, we'll talk about State of Origin later as well. We've talked about City Country. Do you, out of the three representative footballs, you've done the trifecta, did you have a favourite? Was was Test Match? Uh, was it was it State of Origin or City Country? Which one, if you could pick one, which one did you, was most special to you? To get a Test Match. A Test Match was the yeah. pinnacle in your eye? That's the that's as far as it can go. That's the... We're going to talk about State of Origin now. So in 1981, you touch judged the second ever State of Origin at Lang Park. In those days, the fighting was very much on from the start and they were tough games. The referee uh, for this game was the New Zealander Kevin Steele. Uh, in those days, they had neutral referees. And uh, the other touch judge was Giebel from Queensland. Can you describe what the atmosphere was like and your feelings doing State of Origin, particularly at Lang Park? State of Origin, uh, that, that, that was that was tough. <laughs> there were too many. There were a lot of black eyes. Yep, a lot yeah. of black eyes. Do you remember what was the crowd like? Were they very hostile in those days? Uh, yes, Queensland and and, and you know. I always thought New, New South Wales contained themselves pretty well, uh, but um, Queensland not so much. Um, but anyway, it was it was a lot of punching. <laughs> Certainly, was a lot of fighting in those days. Yeah, and you were very fortunate. You were one of the first. Um, touch judges to be sent up there. I think Max Thompson might have been the first touch judge the year before, and then you you got to go up to Queensland. Now, was, was State of Origin, do you remember, was it different to regular club games? Was it more intense, faster? Uh, was it just that little bit of a step above? No, no it, was, it was because Queensland didn't like New South Wales, and that and that was, uh, that, that's I, I saw it, well, only one of us are going to win and it's not going to be us. And that, yep. 
I, I think that's an excellent way of putting it. They they didn't like each other, and um, it was either you or me. They they were both yeah, that's right. yeah. tooth and nail to, to get the victory. Hmm. Because before that, they had the just the interstate games, didn't they? Where they played, where they played their club football. This was actually they played where they were born, so it probably meant more, did it? It, put, it just put me finger there. This is that they had missed saying that the, the bloody bloke from Queensland getting his head punched. I think you were quite busy that day. You came on for a lot of reports. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, they were probably the, the tougher, toughest games, actually. Well, that they were. Like it was a state against state. That's what it was. It, well, that was the same, wasn't it? State against state, mate against mate. Yeah. 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 Crazy. yeah. No, no, and I think that the person, if I remember now, the, the, uh, who, the person now that um, really put me on the road to get a test match in, in Queensland and New South Wales, and it was Eric Cox. Yep. And Eric Cox could not have done, and I say this sincerely, more for me yep. and my career. He was certainly, I've heard you say before, he's certainly someone you had a lot of time for. Of course. But if he, if he, if he, um, if he, if he, if he, if he was having a bad day, um, you wouldn't want to go to the football. <laughs> so it was best to be on his good side. Yeah, yes, yeah. Well, it, it wasn't that he was picking, picking on you, but he was going to pick on somebody else because he he was that sort of guy. You know? And do you know why he had a liking for you? I, I, I don't. I, that, that I never know, knew. As highlighted earlier, you had a great deal of success on grand final day. You touched judge three first grade grand finals. The first of which came in 1980, where you touched judge the match between Canterbury and Easts. Greg Hartley was the referee and someone who you often ran with, Max Thompson was on the other line. It must've been very exciting to get your first first grade grand final. Yeah, that, that was a, a great day. That's a good day, though. It's a good picture, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, excellent. It, it's, t TNT years were really, really good for all of us in, in, that, in that period, anyway. Hartley can't get out of it. <laughs> Try to get gets into every yeah, camera. Yeah, right out of it. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that, that that time that year, um, that was really good, and um, I think I, I kicked on from there. No, by the time, by the, yeah, so by the time I sort of got to that level, um, you know, I was pretty confident that I could handle it all. But like I mean, and, 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 and Hartley was always a, a good backstop for, for the both of us, you know, Max and, and, and the others as well. It, it was for, for me that that, that era it was a, a really well, it was a good a good part of my career because it was. But, and um, it certainly was, and the standard of, of football in the eighties was very tough and and very yeah. skilled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't. Um, I, I look pretty tall there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty tall and fit. Yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I certainly um, wasn't hanging out at the bar all the time. So, uh, although there were some girls, but yeah. So that that was yeah. Uh, that was that was a really great great time for me anyway. Yeah, it certainly um, was. And your memories of Max Thompson as a touch judge, a, a very experienced and, and very good campaigner? 
Well, he's pretty Mr. Mr. Cool, you know, like he, um, he never got busted. We, we work so well together. That's, that's the way I, I saw it. Did you have much to do with him off the field? Did you spend much time with him or was mainly on the field? Uh, or mainly on the field, actually. But you had a good, a good deal of trust. Yeah, no, we, 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 got, we got on very well. You know, you know, Max was, you know, he, he wouldn't do, do you a bad turn, right? Yeah. And he was and not and, only... And, and, hang on. And, and at the same time, always remember Alex Cox was looking in over a whole lot of it. He was always looking over your shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or mine anyway. Yeah. Did he have a lot of time for Max Max Thompson as well? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your second grand final comes in 1981 with Parramatta playing Newtown. This was Parramatta's maiden premiership and the last grand final that Newtown would participate in before they folded a couple of years later. The trio of officials was the same as your previous grand final. It was Greg Hartley and Max Thompson and yourself there again on grand final day. It must have been nice to do two grand finals in a row, Ian. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I was very lucky. I think you're, I think you're a bit modest. It's not just luck. No, well, sometimes, like, I mean, you can, um, I think about, I, I, I've got a lot, to, a lot of time for Eric Cox, which a lot of people didn't have. And, 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 and Max and I, we, we did it all, you know, sort of thing. So we, we were lucky. But we did have a lot of fighting to, to, to to contend with. with. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a new getting, getting bowled over everywhere. I don't know what day that was. Yeah, well, this one here you can see on screen now. You come yeah. in, Max, for a report. I think Ray Price uh, goes at Tommy Radonikus there and the penalty goes to, to Newtown. Mm. I don't think we've seen it. A piece of vision yet from your career, Ian, without a fight in it. <laughs> I love it. You, you, well, certainly, well. you certainly had to keep your wits about you. Yeah, well, in, in, in all this that you're looking at, yeah, I know. It, that's the way I, it was. Yeah, I think it was the way it was. And, and like you said before, you, you always have to keep the concentration, didn't you? If you switch for right. a second, yeah. you miss something. Well, you, 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 yeah, you, you just, sometimes some things have come from left, left field. And that, that can make the difference. Yes, yes, between the regular touch judges and the good touch judges. Having eyes in the back of your head. Yeah. Or somewhere else. <laughs> I remember one life member telling me, uh, a Parramatta life member, Billy Halebutt, used to say you have to have eyes in the back of your, your backside. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Billy Halebutt, eh? Billy could break. Yeah. Was. Okay. All right, we'll talk about your last grand final now. You had to wait a couple of years until your third grand final, which came in 1984. Parramatta were gunning for four premierships in a row, but Canterbury were just too strong on the day, winning in a low scoring affair. This time you ran the grand final with Kevin Roberts as the referee and Bob Hunt uh, as the other touch judge. Now, Kevin Roberts, he's, he has a very good reputation uh, in refereeing, a uh, very, very strong referee, a great character. W what are your memories of, of Kevin? And Kevin, Kevin Roberts had the good knack of getting a hold of the game and not letting it get away from him, you know, whereas some other people further down the track didn't quite make it. I think 
he he was a policeman. I think that might have helped him in that grounding, having a, a firm um, hand of control. Yeah, yeah. And he always had a great deal of respect from the players, which was important. True. So that Parramatta team was very strong in the 80s and, and the Bulldogs were always there as well. They were good rivals. Yes. Yeah. And another low-scoring affair. There weren't many points in in this game, was there? No. Uh, Canterbury beat Parramatta. Yeah, that was in, in 1984. Um, but yeah. they played each other a, a few more times throughout the 80s. Yeah. yeah. They were good rivals. Yeah, that's right. And they, they were hard games, you know. Yeah, they were very hard games. Yeah. Ian, you've had a fabulous career and we've got through most of it thus far. Um, if we were to talk about everything, we would run out of time. Your career was that jam-packed, full of uh, appointments and achievements. Um, just two that I'd like to highlight before we move on to your off-field career. The first of which is the 1981 Craven Mild Cup. Now, this was the pre-season cup in those days, for those that didn't know, and it was actually the last running of this particular competition. Uh, you touch judged the final at the SCG between Eastern Suburbs and Parramatta. Uh, the referee was Greg Hartley, and the other touch judge was Max Thompson. We've talked about both of those at length. Uh, for Eastern Suburbs, Ron Gitto and Noel Cleal scored the tries, with Gitto kicking three goals, and for Parramatta, Ray Price scored their only try in a 12 points to three loss to the Roosters. The final appointment that I wanted to highlight from your illustrious career came quite late on in your career and it was in 1988. It was the Commonwealth Bank Cup Grand Final played at Parramatta Stadium between, funnily enough, your old school, Parramatta Marist, who ran out 14-6 winners over Holy Cross Ride. That's interesting, isn't it? Jeez. Yeah. Uh, the referee for this game was Bill Harrigan and Max Dunn was your fellow touch judge. Now, there were many great players from the Commonwealth Bank competition that went on to play first grade. Yes. And the Peter Sterling medal uh, was for the player of the match, and that was won by David Bazari on the day, and he went on to play for Balmain quite successfully in first grade. Um, just a comment maybe from yourself on the standard of schoolboy football before we move on to your off-field career. Um, yeah. It was it was a good it was a, it was a pretty strong competition I know that uh, and many of those players went on to to play first grade didn't they yes good had a high success rate your service to refereeing and the game of rugby league in general is immense and hard to appropriately reflect in words amongst numerous other roles. You are both the president of the Parramatta Referees Association and the New South Wales Referees. You stand unmatched as serving for the longest period in both roles. You are Parramatta president from 1971 to 1984, only giving that away to take on the chairmanship of New South Wales from 1985 to the year 2000. That is an incredible 30 years in the figurehead role. What made you decide to take up these roles? Did you enjoy them? Yeah, no, the, I, 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 I've had a great, a great career of rugby league, right? And um, I, I couldn't have wished for more, right? And in some way, I, I must give a bit more or a lot more back to the game. It would have kept you very busy being chairman of New South Wales? Yeah, it certainly did, yeah, New South Wales, yeah. yeah. I was just fortunate that I came into the game at that time and thinking back, I was very fortunate because I had the Parramatta people and the, the New South Wales and the Lindsay Powers and all that. It was a really great time 
for refugee separation. It yeah. certainly was. It was it was very progressive and it was uh, well ahead of its time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about the TNT sponsorship? Well, well that, that was the greatest uh, thing for uh, referees of that day. Uh, the, the money came into the team. That you, you, there was plenty of money out to, to do, do things. Right? Yeah. Uh, what are your memories of Bill Petley and uh, Lindsay Plows? They they were quite close with the referees. Very very close, but uh, particularly, uh, yeah. Both, both at the uh, you know the footy game and also afterwards, and all, yeah, they, they they did a lot to to make refereeing uh, in Parramatta and and in uh, New South Wales. Um, yeah, they they did a lot to to uh, promote it all through the um, TNT uh, sponsorship. Yeah. It certainly did, a and the funding helped with lots of different initiatives, uh, helped with the jerseys and also some of these books and resources and communications gear and those things down the track? Well, yeah, it was, a, it, was a, uh, it was just magic. It was a, a, a period of, of our refereeing in, in like within the Parramatta district and, and, and in New South Wales and that um, the game wouldn't have gone to that level if um, these people hadn't have, um, participated to them anyway. Yeah. Now, not only were you chairman of, of New South Wales and Parramatta, you also went on to be chairman of the now defunct Australian Rugby League Referees Association. That, that period was, uh, that was very good actually. Well, it was good for me, you know. I had I, I got quite a lot out of it, um, and um, yeah, this this, this lot or this, these times yeah. uh, came after Bill, the, the Bill Pitlis and that, and um, and I think I I think I lost the, I, I lost a lot of um, uh, interest in it for 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 a period of time. And I turned to turned it to my um, other sport, uh, the, the sport of kings, <laughs> and my favourite little um, what would I call it? Horse, Popeye. Um, Popeye. Cool rock and Popeye. That's cool what it rock was. and Popeye. So you're a life member of Parramatta referees the New South Wales Rugby League Referees Association, the New South Wales Rugby League and the ARLRA. What does it mean to you to hold these life memberships? Well, I suppose, I, I, I'm sort of get, getting back and looking back at, in the past, but uh, it, um, it was, a, it was a, just a great time for me actually. Like I mean, any any referee uh, that aspires to be very good, then be, that's what you aim for. Like uh, this great this great banner that's sort of in front of me at the moment, uh, it's probably three three good blokes that always looked after each other, like yourself, um, John Connor. And uh, Max, there's so many. Like you're lucky if you if you get a go, aren't you? And and but looking looking down the whole lot of it, I was just at the well, the, the right place at the right time in life, and um, but with 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 some guidance from the people that are around me, you know, like the. Right, right from Ruddy right back to to all those people that that, that were doing all that, you know. Yeah. Now, life membership, as you said, is very special, but this one must have been particularly special. This was life membership from 
the New South Wales Rugby League, not the Referees Association, the Rugby League themselves. They must have held your contribution quite highly. Well, so you well, like if you if you if you've done done your turn, you've had your turn, and you've had had your life and all that, and you can take the little part of that and and put it together and and say, well, I, I did some, I made some mistakes, but then again, I made some errors, and then I made it, all that sort of thing, and uh, yeah, no, I. I, I I got nothing to um, I, I I couldn't I couldn't feel any 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 more proud really of what 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 you've got there in front of you and um, so that that says a lot for for, for the, my, my my career anyway from right up to. Referees Association, so ARL Now, unfortunately, your father didn't get to see all of it, but do you think he'd be looking down with a smile and he'd be very proud of young Ian? He could. I think he certainly would. You've achieved so much on the field and, and you've given tenfold off it to rugby league and and refereeing is better due to your contribution. Well, it's nice to think of it that way. It certainly is. And I had a great time with some great people. Yeah, some funny idiots as well, but, <laughs> <laughs> but they, they were the funny ones. There's always a few idiots out there. You can't do much yeah. about that. Yep, they're probably out there now, having a look around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Outside the recognition of life membership, your contribution has been recognised by being awarded the George and Amy Hanson Trophy in 1982, the Australian Sports Medal in 2000, and most recently, you won the Eric Cox Medal in 2011. How does it make you feel to receive these awards for your contribution to the game? Well, I, I had such a great time. Like, I mean, I don't think I really trod on any people's toes too often, but uh, I certainly, um, I certainly had it. I, I, it was just a. a in a batch of round people, you know, I, I just couldn't um, take it so good. Luck. And Coxie was really good for me. Yep. You've spoken highly of Eric Cox before, and, and you mentioned it just there. I think we reflect the company of the people we keep, don't you think? We... That's right, yeah. Yep. yeah. I think if we're surrounded by good people, we can we certainly achieve good things. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. true. Now, the Eric Cox medal would have been special to you as you had a very close relationship with Eric and very a number of very good names have won this award, including your, your mate, Max Dunn. We've got a picture here of you and Max together with your Eric Cox medals. Yes. Yeah. Do we get it around about the same time, I suppose? He um, actually won it in 2010 and then you won it in 2011. Okay, well, well, all smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly is all smiles. Uh, Max Dunn is number one for me. Uh, we've, we've, we've never had a crossword or any, anything like that. Uh, no, I think being able to wit being able to witness yeah. that firsthand, he he always looks after you. He's always always got your back and has a good word to say about you. Now, not only are you good friends, but you're also co-patrons. So currently, you are co-patron of both the Parramatta Referees Association and the New South Wales Referees Association. You share the honour at Parramatta with close friend Max Dunn. 
uh, the patronship at New South Wales you share with, or you did share with the late Jack O'Sullivan and now yeah. with the well-respected Doug Winton. Uh, it must be nice at this point in your life to still um, be recognisable within the association and still contributing in, in such a role. been very fortunate and had a lot of friends yeah. and I think the patron role is is a role that um, shows that the membership has the utmost respect uh, for that particular person yeah. it's probably probably patrons we've got a few now haven't we and you originally were co-patron with Jack O'Sullivan are your memories of him yeah, he, 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 was, he was a good boy. He, he, he was, we were friends for, with Dulcie and all those people for a long, long time. And he gave, he gave a lot to refereeing, particularly the junior referees, I remember. He was from Western Suburbs. Yes. Yeah. So it must be nice for you um, at this point in your career to be able to uh, hand out certificates, and awards such as the Darkie McCall and, and hand out grading certificates. That must be something nice at this point. Yeah, yeah that is. It's, you know, the, 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 it keeps, the, the, you've got to keep, keep on keeping on. Yeah. And um, yeah, as long as you live, you keep, you're, just, you're still alive. Yeah, I think, and it's a cycle too, particularly you used to be the person receiving those awards and, and now you've done your bit and you're you're handing them on. This is true. Um, um, Over the years you have had much fun with the referees off the field, being heavily involved in the bowls days and catching up with old mates at various functions. Uh, you enjoy your bowls, Ian? Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a while since we've had we've had a bowl stay, but uh, we're going to put it all together again anyway. Yes. Yes. Uh, Brian Ryan married his heart to that, and uh, and he, he'll put. He, I, th I think he's in the process of getting it um, all together again. So. And and you enjoy catching up at other functions, the life members functions, and various dinners it's good reminiscing with the old crew yeah well that, that that's what it's still about you, you, you had your mates and you have them for life yes yeah. some fall down and some don't make you know it's, and there's always plenty of stories told some more truthful than others yeah well <laughs> that, oh, can you hold that for me <laughs> what's the most important thing that you've taken out of refereeing or what has rugby league refereeing given you r r yeah r r rugby league from the day my father put, gave me his first football and uh, he, he came home one day with the football and then and away we went and never, never looked back and what would you say is the biggest thing that you've gotten out of rugby league since that time that you, your father gave you the first ball? Is it confidence? Is it friendships? Yeah, I, 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 we made a lot of friends and, and uh, we, 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 we just wonder what, what life would have been without them. That's, that's the main thing. You just meet so many people, you know. And you certainly and everybody's happy. <laughs> when you look back and reflect on your on-field career, Ian, uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, I suppose, but I, I probably, I would say, I, I probably would have, uh, well, like when my career, uh, active career, finished, um, I still, you know, played on a bit. Um, in, in, in other in the, uh, interests and, and, and my, my whole 
game in life, but it was the rugby league. So I'm not, I'm not putting the affair with your side. But, no. Um, I think it's hard for people to understand outside of rugby league. Um, it's not just a hobby, it's a lifestyle, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, that's right. I think it all I mean, it, it consumes you. True. True. Yeah. From yeah, the it takes up a lot of time. Yep. But it's all worth it. Right. Yep. It certainly is. And you, and you, and yeah, well, well you, you know now, even now, you're experiencing all these things that, you know, these people that went before me and you, uh, and, you know, yeah. and, um, Is that something you think highly of that um, you went out there to try, show the path or lead the way for, for those people? The younger people coming through later on in future generations. Yeah, I, I, I think that the biggest thing in in the whole game, uh, which really merits a, a lot of thought, is um, the the the, the uh, referees punch of you know the whatever you call them, uh, but uh, they stick together. Yep. Not, not, not some, some, some type of, some people go away from the, uh, the path of righteousness and some, some don't, but there's a lot of people that are still going around as referees. I think, yeah, a lot of people start refereeing and, and they always come back to it and the people around it. That's right, yeah, yeah. As long as your legs keep going, you've got a chance to keep going with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you enjoy, you talked about your active career, but afterwards and you stayed involved, did you enjoy giving back to refereeing? Well, that's, yeah, that's what I should do. Like, um, and I suppose in a way, in, in, in a small way anyway, I, I do. I, like, uh, I, I, I would never walk away from the game. I, don't, um, I, I would never, never walk away. All right, to our fast five to finish off. Uh, number one, what is your signature dish if you were to cook, Ian? Um, I like I like sausages. Um, so second one, uh, what is your favourite holiday destination or, or the most recent place you've been? Well, yeah, Madeline Mad took me to Tumut, Tumut, and, and um, Tumut and back, because that's where part of the family, uh, part of the family. People. So what does your perfect day off look like? What, what we've been doing recently is going to um, Parramatta Park and uh, Mad Madeline drives me down into the park and we get somewhere near the stadium and um, I go for a walk into the park and all that sort of thing. Not, yep. not too far. And um, on the other side of the river. All right. So at number four, what is your favourite sport outside of rugby league? Oh, look, probably, probably at, at this time it is bowls. Um, yep. But you can't play bowls anymore, or some, something that they tell you. So you just. And were you any good at the bowls when you were playing it? Uh, average. Average. <laughs> no, no, I, I suppose not too bad. <laughs> not too bad. I've seen you play bowls. You, you're a pretty good bowler. All right. Now, the last one on this one is, if you could bring back one rule to rugby league, what rule would you change? I, actually, I, I wouldn't change anything. Like, I mean, the, the, the game, the game's going good. Like, that, that's as I see it. 
and, and there's plenty of opportunities for people to go advance and all that sort of thing. Yep. And um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't change anything with rugby league. Yeah. No, I think often people are, are too busy beating up on the game and, and forgetting what a great game we already have. Yeah, that's right. Like, yeah, yeah. Ian, it's been an absolute pleasure today. You're a man that I, I respect so very highly and you've contributed so much to the game. As I said, if we were to talk about your entire career and all your contributions, we would run out of time. You've given a great deal to the game of rugby league and we are indebted to you. Hang on. Um, the, the contribution, um, Daniel, that you've made for rugby league in our district and, and, and others. And you don't work so hard to put together this um, thing today. Uh, and I, I just, I've just blown away. No, thank you, Ian. I, I really appreciate those kind words. And it's only an, a drop in the ocean compared to what you've done for rugby league refereeing. and. If I can work my way towards something of like what you've achieved, I'll, I'll be very, very proud. Um, look after Madeline and stay safe oh. and enjoy those, enjoy those walks. And thank you for your time again. All right. And thank you very much. No, no worries at all. Bye for now. Bye.